Namo Buddhaya, this is Avina Gulecha and I welcome you to this channel and to this video. Uh, in this video, I am discussing about my learning essence, my learnings from the uh, Middle Discourses 12, which is the longer discourse on the Lion's Road. Uh, the uh, last video that I posted was Middle Discourses 11, which was the shorter discourse on Lion's Ra Road. This is the longer discourse, right? Also, please check out, there is a detailed playlist a uh, full playlist of middle discourses which has all the middle discourses videos which you can go and check right <clears throat> the link to the complete discourse is given in the description you can read the complete discourse to get your insights okay so my learning summary is this see now understand this that this is a lo long discourse this is a long discourse so what are the key points i have just noted down so see uh, what is lion's role? Lion's role is the fearless proclamation of the fact that Buddha is a supreme being and his teachings are supreme and uh, uh, basically Buddha ex exhorts the mendicants to you know uh, not be defeated right to be very very clear and in their understanding that the teachings of Buddha are of the realized one and go fearlessly and proclaim the teachings right because see how it was constructed is that Buddha had uh, created this knowledge and he asked the mendicants to go wherever they go and spread this knowledge and in return for the knowledge that they, that they gave they received arms so this was how you know the interaction used to be the mendicants could not earn by themselves they had to depend on the arms what the other people gave so they had to teach the dhamma to them and in return receive the arms right so buddha said that just don't worry about you know uh, you know people from other religions and you know saying about this and that my knowledge, Buddha was very clear on that it is complete, comprehensive and unsurpassed. So this is the longer discourse that the Buddha gave on the, on the power of his teachings, right? So now the context here is that uh, there is a uh, reference to Sunakatta. Sunakatta was a disciple who left the teaching of the Buddha and was kind of spreading negative things about him. So what basically the, the uh, Sunakatta was doing is that Sunakatta was saying, wherever he was going, he is saying, he teaches what he is worked out by logic following a line of inquiry expressing his own perspective and his teaching leads those who practice it to the complete ending of suffering. Right? So in a way he was contradicting himself Sunakatta. So Sunakatta said that his teaching leads those who practice it to the complete ending of the suffering, which is what Buddha's goal was. So Sariputta told Buddha that this is what he is doing. So Buddha said that Sariputta, this silly person sunakatta he will not understand he cannot infer the the powers that i have from my teaching see the thing is that you have to have the eyes to see the teacher right so if you see him superficially then you will not gain the proper understanding of what is being taught what are the what are the skills of your teacher right you have to have that certain level of depth within you to understand and then, you know, this is what I have observed in my spiritual journey, that as the depth in us increases, so I have followed many teachers in the past, and as I have observed that as my depth of my spiritual maturity increased, I came across teachers who were, you know, much more deep, whose knowledge was much more deep, and this is how I came to the knowledge of Buddha, right? And there where my journey has, you know, come, that I found my thing, right? So... <clears throat> So basically, Buddha was saying that, uh, no, don't rely on what Sunakatta is saying here and there. He is a silly man. He doesn't know what my powers are. So Buddha said that a person like Sunakatta cannot infer the depth of his teaching. Now, what is the depth? There are certain things. Buddha said, the blessed one. Blessed one is the Buddha. Buddha blessed one is a perfectly fully awakened Buddha, accomplished in knowledge and conduct, holy, knower of the world, supreme guide for those who wish to train. Teacher of gods and humans, awakened, blessed. Blessed one wields the many kinds of psychic powers. So various kinds of psychic powers were mentioned. See, Buddha never ever kind of showed off his psychic powers, right? Which other teachers did because he did not need that, right? He did not want to create followers and all. He wanted to just show the part to the students that this is how you can be free from suffering. So he did not want, he did not, you know, create miracles and all those things. Though he had all those powers. Then it is said that uh, in the Sutta, blessed one with a clear audience that is pu purified and superhuman hears. Clear audience is clear hearing. 
hears both kind of sounds human and divine whether near or far the blessed one understands the minds of beings and individuals then buddha says 10 powers of the realized one with which he claims the bull's place roars his lion roars his lion's roar in the assemblies and turns the divine wheel as follows so basically buddha is now, now saying that a realized one that i am have 10 powers 10 powers with it, with which i claim the bull's place that when i enter into a assembly of like aristocrats or brahmins or householders i you know claim the bull's place you know that front seat and then i roar the lion's roar because i have that depth in my teaching right so what are the 10 powers so buddha says number one they truly understand the possible as possible and the impossible as impossible they truly understand the results of the deeds undertaken in past future and present in terms of grounds and causes right so what what are the results of the deeds they understand and their grounds truly understand where all paths of practice lead right truly understand the world with its many and diverse elements truly understand the diverse convictions of sentient beings truly understands the faculties of sentient beings after comprehending them with his mind truly understands corruption cleansing and emergence regarding the absorptions liberations and emotions and attainments recollects many kinds of past lives sees sentient beings getting reborn according to their deeds and having regard realized the undefiled freedom of heart and freedom by wisdom in this very life and lives having realized it with their own insight due to the ending of the defilements right so these are the 10 powers of the realized one i will suggest if you want to go in depth into studying this this is like a basic short video that i am making i don't want to unnecessarily complicate things but if you want to really understand then go in the link that is mentioned in the description and read the sutta for yourself and you'll get a more finer insight on each of the 10 powers right okay then buddha says that that ascetics who say negative things about me and buddha was very clear on this that any negative thing that you utter about realized one and it's not only only about buddha any being who is a realized one will go in hell right and this is a very very important fact there are i think three or four things that straight away takes the person into hell realms and this is one of them and then there is uh, these things about um uh murdering father or mother or teacher and i think two or three more which is the gravest kind of things so buddha says those ascetics like like this sunakatta person right who is spreading these negative information about me these people unless they mend their speech that's why the right speech is very important friends that's why it's very very important that we do not spread ill about, about any enlightened person even if we perceive them not to be enlightened but let's not speak about any ill about them you know because you never know in a way you know uh, extended meaning of this is that you never speak ill about any person because every person has the seeds of buddhahood in him you never know when the buddha buddha emerges from that person that person becomes completely changed like rishi valmiki valmiki was a it's like said that uh, who wrote the ramayan i think who who was a, a, a daku who's a murderer right and a coit and then he is completely transformed similar example of angulimala i have made a separate video on how one sentence of buddha changed angulimala entire buddha uh, angulimal changed from a uh, being a, a murderous decoit to a follower of the dhamma so uh, try not to speak negative about other people and especially enlightened beings and if we do that then we create a lot of negative karma so buddha was saying that unless the ascetics who say negative things give up that speech and a thought and let go of that view they will be cast down to hell and buddha was not saying anything that he has like personal enmity with that person buddha is always saying if this then that so buddha is a, like a teacher he says if you do this then this will happen and out of this compassion that buddha have for people you know that they were this he saw they being su- suffering due to the, their deeds that's why he created the eightfold path that okay i'm telling you follow this eightfold path don't create more suffering for yourself right okay then buddha said he has buddha said he has four kinds of self assurance and no one can legitimately scold him how scold one that you claim to be a fully awakened buddha but you don't understand these things you claim to have ended all defilements but you have still have defilements the acts that you are uh, that you say are obstructions are not really obstructions for the one who perform them the teaching doesn't lead those who, pra- who practice it 
to the complete end of suffering. So these four things, no one can scold about these th four things to the Buddha because he is completely self-assured about these four things. What? That he is a fully awakened Buddha, he has completely ended his defilements and he, whatever obstructions he says are really obstructions to the practice and his practice does indeed lead the person to an end of suffering. So all the four things are there. He was completely self-assured. So he was not, you know, you know, uh, kind of flustered if, you know, someone comes and says something bad to him and all this. Then there are like, Buddha talks about the eight assemblies. The eight assemblies are the assemblies of aristocrats, brahmins, householders and ascetics. Assembly of the gods and other four great kings. Assembly of the gods under the 33. Assembly of the maras. Assembly of the brahmas. Possessing above self-assurances. So all the above self-assurances since Buddha had, he, the realized one approaches and enters right into these eight assemblies without any fear, with full self-assurance. Right? So that Buddha said. Then Buddha talked about four kinds of reproduction that Buddha knows about. The four kinds of reproduction happens for creatures born from an egg, from a womb, from moisture or spontaneously. Then Buddha said that he knows, uh, he knows, he has the knowledge about the five destinations which are the hell, animal realm, ghost realm, human realm and the god realm. Then Buddha said about his ability to comprehend the mind of the person, that this person who is practicing in this way and he has entered this path and when his body will break up, after that Buddha knows that he will be born in so and so place. So that knowledge he has. Then Buddha recalls having practiced a spiritual path consisting of the four factors, which is being a mortifier, that means giving extreme uh, pain, suffering to the body, living roughly, living in disgust at sin and living in seclusion. So he has practiced all the four you know, different spiritual paths. That, then Buddha said that Buddha listed several views. Uh, then he listed several views which were held by ascetics of his time. Like purity comes from food, purity comes from rebirth, purity comes from sacrifice. Buddha said that I have practiced all. And, and even after practicing all, I realize that they do not completely end the suffering. So, so in this discourse, what is happening is Buddha is actually telling that, see, I have, you know, done the whole thing, right? And then I have realized my way, right? It's not that I'm just saying that I'm the fully realized one, right? So that all Buddha was trying to bring, bring out, right? So this is, this is it. This is uh, a basic learning summary, learning essence that I could share with you. See, my whole intention is that, so that you at least get some perspective, some idea. And then you can build up upon this by the reading of the suttas. So I hope this was useful. Do read the sutta at your end. And let us have full faith, full confidence in the teachings of the Buddha that these teachings can put us at a complete end of suffering. And let us follow our teachings. Let us stay motivated. Do join the Sangha meetings, uh, which happen like Monday to Friday. right? So you do join those Sangha meetings. You can just... Uh, uh, comment below if you want to join and do share your thoughts, comments and reflections from this video uh, from the learning of this, from this sutta um, thank you so much for watching this video Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya